The heavily contaminated wound is first cleaned using gauze soaked in normal saline solution. Gauzes are placed either side of, in this example the patient's knee, so as to avoid significantly soiling the drapes. Cleaning should ideally be performed starting at the centre of the wound and moving outwards towards the perimeter. This is not the technique demonstrated in this film. Using forceps, all foreign bodies are removed from the wound and surrounding tissues. This may include pieces of glass, gravel, wood splinters, missile fragments and pieces of clothing. As much debris as possible is removed from the wound at this stage. After cleaning and preparation for debridement, the wound and surrounding tissues are then carefully inspected, looking specifically at the quality of the soft tissue and margins of the injury, areas of devitalized tissue, the transition from healthy to non-vital tissue, and the color and nature of the wound bed. Assessment is made on the quality of tissue perfusion within and surrounding the wound. In cases of delayed debridement, signs of infection are also inspected for. The devitalized skin surrounding the wound and any crushed wound edges are then excised to give a clean, vital wound margin, in this case using scissors. To facilitate non-traumatic grasping, the wound has been wetted using normal saline solution. Only the tissue that is being excised should be grasped with the forceps so as to prevent damage to healthy tissue. All non-vital tissue is excised from the wound bed. Depending on the nature and the type of the wound, this may involve the removal of tissue from cutaneous, subcutaneous, fascial, muscular and or bony levels. Excessive tissue resection should be avoided by paying close attention to the demarcation between vital and non-vital tissue. If the vitality of the tissue is unclear, a staged debridement, or adjunct use of non-surgical methods of wound debridement, can be considered to minimise the damage to healthy tissue.